Today we're going to simulate the situation of having pre-existing tracks brought into the wearing recording studio and having a musician that needs to overdub something on top of those and how we can set up a headphone mix so that they can accurately hear what's happening from Pro Tools. So in Pro Tools we have our existing session, it's a piano recording session. First thing is we need to set up a stereo auxiliary track. So I'm going to use the command key, command shift N. You can also do a pull down from the track menu. Um, pull down track and create new. And we're going to create a stereo aux input track. And what that's going to do is give us a stereo headphone mix that we can then send to a musician on stage. And you know what, maybe we have two musicians, so we'll create two stereo aux inputs. So the first thing I'm going to do after creating those is label them. I'm going to double click on the existing label. So I'm going to abbreviate headphone with HP, and I'm going to say this is headphone mix 1. And then I'm going to hit command over to toggle to the next track. It's handy instead of having to click out. Headphone mix 2. After doing that, I'm going to do what's called solo safe. I'm going to create a solo safe on each of these channels. I'm going to do that by holding down command and clicking on the solo button. Now you'll notice that the solo button becomes opaque. And what that's going to do is make sure that if I solo a track on the left hand side here, it's not going to affect what the musician hears out in the recording studio. <laughs> So after we have the headphone mix buses set up, I need to program them to have both an output that corresponds to our stage rack um, and the sends and outputs to the headphone amplifier on stage or in the recording studio. And I need to have an input. So I need to feed something to these auxiliary buses and I need to send them somewhere. So let's feed them first. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the input down and go to buses. And I've already, in a previous session, created uh, this headphone mix 1 out of bus 1 and 2. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same to headphone mix 2, but you'll see the steps. So I'll pull down the menu here, input. I'm going to go to bus and select bus 3 and 4. You'll notice it's not utilized anywhere in the session because it's white. And after we have bus 3 and 4 engaged as an input on this auxiliary channel, I'm going to right-click it and select rename. So I'm going to rename bus 3 and 4 headphone mix 2. And now you'll see bus headphone mix 1 feeds this auxiliary channel and uh, bus headphone mix 2 feeds the corresponding auxiliary channel here as well. Then we need to assign outputs. So all puts 1 and 2 are clearly being used for our down mix, our left right master mix. You can see that on our master channel as well to send our mix out to the Toft audio console or to be monitored. So we don't want to use those. We'll select the output on these auxiliary buses and we're going to select something different. So let's select outputs 3 and 4 for headphone mix 1, outputs 5 and 6 <clears throat> for headphone mix 2. Now I need to determine which channels am I going to send to these mixes. And the easiest thing that I find is to first select the channel on the far left and shift click the channel on the far right and now you've selected everything. I like to use the modifier option shift which will allow you to make a change uniformly across every channel that is currently selected which in our case is eight channels here from the session. So holding down option shift, I'm going to pull down the sends menu on the first channel and go ahead and send to headphone mix one. And you'll notice each channel has been sent to headphone mix one. And I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on mix B. I'm going to pull send selector B down while I'm holding option shift and send to headphone mix two. It's not particularly easy to then make a mix by pushing each one of these down and shifting a fader and going and selecting another channel and reselecting the fader. So I like to use expanded sends. In the view menu, I'm going to go ahead and pull the view menu down and go to expanded sends and I'm going to expand send A 
and then I'll go back and do the exact same thing to send B. So now I have a much easier way to change the mix on the fly without having to use pull down menus first. Now while I have all my channels selected I want to make sure that I use the same command the option shift and I want to set the sends for both headphone mix 2 and headphone mix 1 to pre fader and you can do that by selecting these P's and they turn blue as they uh, engage pre fader mode so after we've done that we can go ahead and engage our playback on the channels and we'll see that we have levels coming up on the console we have our on Pro Tools on each channel and this mix is then being reflected on our master but we need to get this mix somehow to the headphones so we can then create a mix on the fly as needed and send these channels to headphone mix one and maybe uh, we make a little bit different mix for whatever reason to headphone mix two it's a different musician they have different needs and you'll notice that we have signal now going to the headphone mixes here <laughs> So as we're listening to this piano, you'll notice that in the control room, everything is panned out according to the location of the microphones, left and right, low microphone, high microphone, bass treble, room left, room right, um, some alternate preamplifiers, things like that. So we want to, we're hearing it in a nice stereo image, a nice stereo field here in the control room, but right now reflected on our sends here, it's not panned out. You'll notice that our panning knobs are all set to center. They're all set to um, the middle, so nothing is actually being sent in a stereo fashion. Now there's two ways to do this very quickly. Um, if you have a panning configuration that is really working for you in the control room and you don't have any reason to believe that it won't work for the musician as well, the easiest way to change this is to make sure that all your channels are still selected and then go into headphone mix on any particular channel and there's this thing here uh, FMP which stands for follow main pan and it says here link panner to the main so what that's going to do is change the panning of the aux send that corresponds to the channel um, to follow whatever the, the channel panning is set to for the left right bus or your main mix to also do it on the auxiliary send. Now in order to apply this selection I have to pause playback and then hold option shift and select follow main pan and you'll immediately notice again it's grayed out our panning knobs but now the panning knobs on headphone mix one are totally tied rather to the panning of the each individual channel it's a reflection of it and if I move um, piano left here in this particular case go up here so you can see it better but it's Everything is tied together now with panning. On headphone mix 2, we still have it independent, and now we can change it however needed. So at this point in time, we're playing back piano tracks. We have stuff coming, being fed into our headphone mix buses. Now we just have to get these um, to the musicians. And there's two main ways of doing this. The first is sending it to the console, and because our outputs are normaled on the Orion, output 3, 4, and output 5 and 6 are actually normal to be returned to the line input settings on the Toft ATB console 3, 4, and 5, 6. It's one to one. So the first thing we're going to do is come to our Toft console and make sure that on the top of the channel strip we actually are engaging line inputs on 3, 4, and 5, and 6. Then we'll go ahead and push our faders up to unity because the meters are post fader. And you'll notice we have quite a lot of level on 3 and 4 so we can actually reduce the level um, using the input trim on the top of the channel strip and then increase on channels 5 and 6. At this point we have signals coming in to 3, 4, 5, and 6 and now we need to get those signals to the headphone amplifier using the stage returns um, on our snake. 
the way things are normaled on the patch bay, you can use auxiliary send one on the console to send to headphone mix one left and auxiliary send two to send to headphone mix one right side. So in our particular case, channels three and four represent headphone mix one, three being left, four being right. So on channel three, I'm only going to send to aux one, and on channel four, I'm only going to send to aux two. On five and six, or headphone mix two, I'm going to go ahead and send to aux three, which is the left-hand side for headphone mix two, and aux four on channel six to aux four. Now, it can be difficult sometimes to mix for something that you can't hear. So as a trick, you can um, change the input monitoring on your central station remote for your monitor controller, and you can actually send these to the left-right momentarily so that you can then hear the mix that you're sending to those headphones. So this is if I toggle the left-right bus assignment on um, channels 3 and 4, now I'm effectively hearing exactly what the musician is hearing on headphone mix 1. Now this is headphone mix 2. And in order to get a good idea of the stereo, remember you have to pan those out accordingly in the stereo mix. But now I'm able to very quickly hear what the musician is hearing on stage so I can create a better headphone mix. To reiterate, headphone mix one is coming out of outputs three and four on Pro Tools, with course, which correspond with Orion output three and four. Headphone mix two is coming out outputs five and six, or Orion outputs five and six. If we choose not to utilize the Toft audio console at all, it's totally fine. We just need to make sure that we route the accord, uh, the proper outputs of the Orion to the proper um, feeds to the stage for our headphone amplifier. In order to do that, we need to use the patch bay. I'm going to go ahead and patch the Orion line outputs to the stage snake returns, which then will feed our headphone amplifier on stage. So Orion line output three, which is the left-hand side of headphone mix one, we're going to feed into uh, stage snake returns one for the left-hand side of the first headphone mix. I'm going to go ahead and use red so I can keep good track of left versus right. And Orion line output 4, which is the right-hand side of headphone 1, I'm going to feed to stage snake return 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same for headphone mix 2. Output 5, which is the left-hand side of headphone mix 2, to stage snake return 3. And output 6, right side of headphone mix 2, into stage snake return 4. At this point in time, they should be receiving signal down there if you've plugged in your headphone amplifier accordingly, and you can make changes as they request. If, for instance, they need um, more or less of anything, you can adjust very easily on your expanded sends. Right now, we're monitoring pre-fader level on our Pro Tools session, and we can change that very easily by pulling down on the Options menu and deselecting pre-fader metering and now you'll see the corresponding level change if your musician asks for an overall decrease in level headphone mix down on headphone mix one and maybe up on two you'll notice that it increases and decreases accordingly